Hey everybody, thanks for joining me and uh, to the guy that made a comment on my YouTube channel to uh, I think his exact quote was why don't you cut your hair you hippie because uh, I, I did let it get long during the winter and so uh, yeah it's gone now so <clears throat> I just wanted to show you guys that just my old ugly old face but um, here's what we're going to do today we're going to figure out the science of a Hudson valve and why and why they don't work very well and I didn't know that at the time I just you know I'm building this trailer and I'm going to put two float levels in you know one halfway in the tank and one all the way up so you need two valves this seems to be the most popular one and so not trying to buck the system I went ahead and bought two Hudson float valves these are considered diaphragm valves so they they're kind of complicated science to make them work uh, and also they just in all these type of valves you cannot ever get a hundred percent flow so uh, I've been working with one of my online buddies I met just through my YouTube videos and uh, some of the pressure washing uh, forums his name's Joel Martz and uh, he's a smart guy and I believe him and I think along the same lines and I'm not saying I'm smart um, so I'm just saying we think along the same lines the main issue is these valves don't flow enough so when you look at them you're going well look at this strainer here quite a bit of restriction um, so I was planning on taking this um, strainer completely out because I already have a strainer for both of these before uh, any water even enters the valve so why would I need that well um, one thing that Joel mentioned uh, he he took and took a few of these out ever so often so he'd get better flow and that makes sense and the reason he did that is because he didn't want to take it completely out because he felt like this area right here was a guide for this diaphragm to go up and down and that made some sense to me so I came out and I screwed a nipple in really tight and I can show you I mean I could probably get another turn out of there but if I reach down in there I can I can flip that up because there's no provision in there to keep that down so my thought was if they wanted this to be a guide and to hold this down to guide for that center pin on that diaphragm they would have put like a, a, a foam gasket here so when you tighten it up it held this in place but as it turns out you can reach down this fitting and tilt it about this much so I think the alignment theory um, although a good one is 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 not 100% valid so I started looking at uh, you know why they would put that on there so if you will take this off well first I'm going to skip and I'm going to show you exactly how these valves turn on and off so I've already taken this one apart so we have a float so when you look at it and you go well no wonder it doesn't flow because it has this little bitty hole but that's not the the purpose of this so let me show you how this works and this is the same type like a fluid master on a toilet works on the same principle so this is actually the seat right here <clears throat> and it's about an inch in diameter and that's going to be important later so inch in diameter now this ring here is just to push down on this silicone seal to seal it that's all this does so it really doesn't do anything you know actually they could have built this into this and went down as one but anyway it's two pieces so here's your diaphragm 
and you're like wow okay so how's this work so you can see the little hole right there that this float right here turns on and off that's all this float does it doesn't actually turn the water itself off so to understand these when you have the well let me first say this there's a small hole right here <clears throat> it's probably it's it's no more than maybe eight thousandths of an inch in diameter and you it's shaped like a cone like this so this hole needs to be open for it to work so water coming in if there was a piece of dirt would have to hit it exactly exactly in the center to go in so if this was flat you see if this tip was flat or even concave it would clog and I'm going to show you in a second again why this is important to have on so <clears throat> How this works is with all this business in here your water is coming in right here and let's just use 50 pounds so you have 50 pounds of water coming in the top and it's pushing right here so if this hole is is shut water 50 pounds of water not only is right here on this one inch diameter seal water can get on the back side of that and or pressure 50 pounds so you have 50 pounds of pressure on this side of the diaphragm which is your seal here's your seal here's your seat you so you have 50 pounds of water pushing here but then on the other side as long as you've closed this hole off there's 50 pounds of pressure on the other side to push up against this seat and you're you think well it's 50 pounds on both sides how does that even turn off because a little bit would seep by this because it would just be basically equal pressure so so the pressure on this seat would be neutral but here comes the science so this is one inch in diameter if you look on the back side here this part of the diaphragm is probably an inch and three-eighths to inch and a half so how does that how does that work well when you have a larger surface area you can put more pressure on an object because you're spreading the 50 pounds of pressure out in a larger area what you do though is when you spread it out in a larger area your movement is isn't as great so basically this valve works against itself so you put it in there you this valve comes up closes that hole off pressure gets on both sides this this uh, diaphragm seal comes up seals against there and it's it's more pressure it's hard to explain because it's 50 pounds on both sides but there's more power pushing up on the bottom so it will overcome the pressure and seal off so when this valve inside drops it opens that hole opens that hole which means there's no pressure on this side and so the water pressure coming in right here overcomes the seal and flows out in here so that's how that works uh, it's it's simple but it's but it's complicated so one of the key things is you got to keep dirt out of here right so if, if this is gets clogged up then you know essentially your your valve won't work so now comes this strainer and if you notice the strainer would go right here there's something special about this strainer and I'll point it out to you right here this center part is blocked off you see how water coming in 
would hit this and have very, I mean, pretty much no chance of any dirt ever hitting here. All right, I just want to add that it's hard to understand that if you have 50 pounds of pressure on each side, how it can have more pressure to close off the valve. So the best way I can think about it is if, if, if my uh, can here was a airbag and you put 50 pounds in it and you put it under my axle and you put 50 pounds in here, the surface area is what, two and a quarter inches? It's not going to lift this vehicle. It's not going to lift that axle. But if you make an airbag as big as the truck and you set the whole truck on it and you put 50 pounds in it, it's going to lift the whole truck. It's the same 50 pounds. It's just used in a different way. It's, it has to do with surface area. Okay, so I'm going to use my utility knife and try to cut some of these out of here. So there's one, and here's two, another thing too guys and gals is <clears throat> there's so much restriction <clears throat> in this valve when it's open. Um, you're probably not going to lose anything by running everything three-quarter inch. So I, I bought even a one-inch hose reel. I mean, it's probably going to help a little bit, but is that important? No, not if you're going to use these valves. Whoop, broke my tip. Okay, what a pain in the butt it was to cut those out. I've kept breaking the tips of my blade off and, and stuff. But anyway, I've got the first one done. Blew off any little pieces and stuff. and So I'll put that in. And now it's going to block the uh, little hole from getting plugged. So some of you guys I know take these completely out. And you will get better flow. And the, the likelihood of... A little piece of crap getting in that little hole is very slim but it is possible so if you take this out you you, you can have a valve that you know it, it could happen in the first 30 seconds I don't know but uh, by putting this back on there you block that center off for that happening so this is a good idea from Joel Martz and uh, maybe for different reasons it still could uh, do some alignment i th i think it it's mostly to keep stuff out of the very end of that but either way it's a good job there joel and so i'm going to do this one and install them <laughs>